Welcome back to part two of the Japan vlogs. We're still in Kyoto, and for breakfast, we decided to go to Wanderer's Stand, which is a local cafe known for, as you can see, their homemade bread. It's run by this one man, as far as I'm aware of, and the interior was just so cozy. It's very small, and there's very limited seating, so just FYI. We got a latte and their French toast, which was delicious. Highly recommend. And then after breakfast, we headed over to Fushimi Inari, which is where you see a ton of these red gates or tories. And here we are just going up to the entrance. I guess near the entrance, it seems customary to have a statue of some kind, which is if you remember from part one where that guy in blue was taking photos of. So this is where you can pay money and get a fortune. And so there's a lot of different fortunes that you can get, such as finding employment or a charm against accidents. So after you pay money, you shake this container up and then you pull a rod that will have a number that corresponds to a wish. Unfortunately, these wishes aren't in English, so we pass on this, but I'll do one later on. So we still haven't gotten to the main parts, but you can kind of glimpse it there. This is a map, and I didn't realize that it's actually a hiking path. We decided not to go all the way up because we wanted to also go to Nara later that day. And here it is. Here is like the great view. And if you turn back, you actually see a bunch of characters written on all of the Tories. And my friend said it's based off of the companies who sponsored these Tories. And periodically, on the way up, there's a bunch of souvenirs and gift shops you can buy. So there's a couple of charms that you can buy here. I bought some for my friends. And a lot of these charms are based off of wishing you luck. Oh, and don't forget to close your umbrella and no food or drinks allowed. And they also sell these stamps on paper rather than stamping it in your notebook. A lot of people also bought these fox wishes and so they could decorate the front of it which was very cute and then they write their wish on the back. So here we are, we're just starting up the path. As you can see, there's not a lot of people and I highly recommend that you just come early around 7 or 8 a.m. because it seems like 9 a.m. is when a lot of tour buses come. And as you're going up, you just see a bunch of other shrines and memorials and these are very cute dog statues or maybe they're foxes. I was especially happy that it was sunny when we came here because it has been rainy and cold and foggy since we've been in Japan and so this sun was much needed. I mean just look at it. It was beautiful. Oh, I guess I, I guess I tripped. <laughs> and this is the very first viewing point and there's a couple of different paths that you can go. So you can go through that path. There's a small little lake right there, a small little pond. And then here's where you can see the various paths on the way. So we're heading on up and as I said, there's even more candles and more... I, I think these are foxes. I'm pretty sure they're foxes because this whole theme of uh, Fushimi Inari is foxes. And so me and my friend, we decided to go down a path that didn't have a lot of people in it. And we saw cats! I am meowing in the background because I'm trying to get the cats to talk to us. Yeah, see this cat meows and I love him. He's such a chonk. He's just so round. I wanted to take him home, but obviously I couldn't. And we stumbled upon this guy as well. This one, it seems like he's blind in one eye, but he seemed pretty chill. And then someone even came by and gave him some food. So all of these stray cats are very well fed. And here he is again, looking very majestic front of the Tory gate right there. Oh wait, I think this is, is this a different cat? I don't know. But this specific path did not have a lot of people at all. So I appreciated that just because you can kind of experience it fully. And here you can see that these are a bunch of fox statues as well. And these are everyone's fortunes, uh, but they're bad luck fortunes. So everyone tied them up to tie their bad wish away. Here's another cat because of course, who doesn't love cats? <laughs> This is another hand washing station. Oh, and I think that's the same cat. Oh, he just walks around like he owns his place because he does. Oh, oh, <laughs> you're not supposed to drink from this, but I believe for cats, there is an exception. At this specific place, there was also a gift shop and they gave out this informational sheet that was very helpful. They sell candles and those fox statues that we saw a bit earlier. So after that quick pit stop, we kept going on our way just down the path. Japan is so beautiful. Here is more Tori gates. I believe the Tori gates are supposed to be, actually let me look this up. What is a Tori gate? 
And there's cherry blossoms. <laughs> Very sad cherry blossoms, but cherry blossoms nevertheless. From there, we decided to visit Nara, where the deer are. You'll see that the train coming is very crowded because a lot of people take this from Kyoto to Fushimi and Nari. And when we got to Nara station, I found the station stamp which features a deer because as you can see, Nara is very well known for their deer. And this is their mascot named Shikamaro-kun. He's very cute. And I, yes, I did take this in the bathroom because I loved it so much. You'll see that Shikamaru-kan is everywhere because they use him to sell anything Nara related. So these are cookies, um, pastries, more cookies. He's so cute. Oh, 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 okay, zooming issues. But look, he's just so cute. I loved him so much. And as you go through Nara, you'll see that there are other deer related things such as this sign and this photo booth. Like, what is this? So you can go in and take a photo <laughs> and they'll put that deer in the background. We also stopped for lunch in Nara and we got this udon. It was amazing. It comes with a tempura set as well. Jen got a different udon set, but nevertheless, both very delicious. Oh, double chin there because I got scared. More eating because I, I don't know. I guess it was the easiest to try to take a video of it. Here is a tempura also delicious i highly recommend that you dip it in the udon broth now we're headed to see the deer these are the deer cookies that you can buy there are vendors throughout the park that will sell these and here are the deer there are a ton of deer that just are walking wherever they want it was kind of alarming that they just walk wherever they want including the sidewalk and here I am, thank you Jen for filming this. I'm bowing to the deer, the deer bows back. So there I am, I'm so, as you can see, I did a little jump because I was so happy at how cute they were. I bow again, they bow back. And then I gave them a cookie. Here's another deer. As soon as they know that you have these deer cookies, they start coming up to you. People say that they are a bit aggressive. I don't, I wouldn't say that they're aggressive per se, but they definitely know that you have the cookies and they want to get it. It's very cute because they'll also just bow on their own because they have been trained that if they keep bowing, that's how they get their food. These are deer that have finished eating and are just, you know, trying to sleep with all of this commotion around them. Oh, these two are headbutting. None of the deer have antlers and I'm not sure if that was on purpose by the government or it naturally happened. I got a little bit closer to the deer. They are very chill. You can pet them and they won't really bother you. Um, but I just kept my distance because I wanted to respect them. So you can see this deer here is like trying to get my attention from the back. So that's what I mean by people think that they're aggressive. Sometimes they will nibble or like headbutt you. But once you run out of cookies, if you just walk away with passion, not with passion, with purpose, they will leave you alone. And they'll leave you alone because there are so many other people that are feeding them that they'll just go find someone else who do have the cookies. And as you can see, I've learned to break up the cookies so that your cookies just go farther rather than giving one whole cookie to each deer. Oh look, simultaneous head bow, did you see that? And that was my time with the Nara deer. It started hailing, so we headed on out. And doesn't this train ride just look like an anime? which is very funny because it's just a regular old terrain. For dinner, we headed to a local place for okonomiyaki. I love that they spelled spicy wrong and made it spicy. We got gyoza as a starter and this is okonomiyaki. It is a star of the show. It's basically a Japanese savory pancake and you grill it on this hot plate that's in front of you. I think because they knew we were foreigners, they actually grilled it for us, uh, basically like 99% finish, and then they let us cut into it. I highly appreciate it, so I wasn't eating raw uh, okonomiyaki. My friend got the flatter version, or I think it's the more Kyoto version, or the southern version. Um, but regardless, both styles are very, very delicious. The next day, I headed over to Osaka and I saw Dotonbori, which is known for this famous Running Man sign. This is the other side of the Running Man sign, and from all of the images I've seen, it makes it seem like this is so long, like all those billboards, but it's really not. And then I headed over to do some shopping. This is a Studio Ghibli store. Out front, they have all of these very cute Totoro's. Even this little small one here. I love them. This is no face. I thought that the coin didn't work, but he did eat it, so I did come back. Yum. 
And now I have no purpose in the store other than to window shop and spend money and make my wallet sad. Because just look how cute everything is! My other friend and I, we just finished watching Ponyo, so it was very cute to see Ponyo. And their plushies were actually so good. Like look at the little mouse um, from Spirited Away. The Totoros, also adorable. The little white one that we saw at the beginning, Cat Bus. And then they also had these, where they're holding a little leaf, a ginkgo leaf above their head. How adorable. They had these notebooks for almost all of their movies that you could choose from. These are magnets. That's a little girl from my neighbor Totoro. And then they also had a bunch of handkerchiefs. Japan is obsessed with their handkerchiefs and towels, and I appreciate it greatly. This is from Princess Mononoke. I have no idea what this is from. And then in the back, they also had a full-scale replica of Kiki's Delivery Service Bakery. And you can actually go in and take some photos, but isn't this amazing? This bread looks so real, and it just, it just warmed my heart up. And then right across from the Studio Ghibli store is the Moomin shop. There's a few characters and cartoons that Japan seems to love, and Moomin is definitely one of them. See more handkerchiefs. I'm telling you, Japan is obsessed with them. And these were coasters, so the coasters had some sass to them. I've actually never seen anything from Moomin, so this was fun to see. Then I headed over to the Flower Miffy shop, which had these amazing acrylic vases but they're for one flower and you can mix and match different colors. Of course, they had a full statue of Miffy with flowers. They also sold bouquets and various flowers. Guess what? More handkerchiefs. More bouquets. And, and just look at that. It's so cute. Next, I headed to the Pokemon shop and it is very busy no matter when you go. So you'll see that my clips are very zoomed in. Here are the starters, the fabulous duck, the crocodile with no thoughts, and the weed cat. Oh my god, they had this huge claw tire, which is absolutely my favorite. They also had, I don't know what these guys are called, but they had all the variations of them. And so there's like that tuna one, that shrimp one, this, I don't know what this one is, but they're all cute. And they just had so many different plushies that you could pick from and from different types. And then right next to that is a Nintendo store. The Nintendo store was surprising in that it had so much merch just from all of their games. This is their Lego set, or maybe, I don't know if this, it might be fake Lego, uh, I don't know. But it was so cute to see. Of course they have Mario. And this is what I mean by just random merch. Like I didn't realize I needed a, an Animal Crossing themed cookie jar, but you know, now I do. And I never play Pikmin, but I absolutely love this guy and think he's very silly. Next, I headed over to the One Piece store. You are not supposed to film in here, and I didn't realize until later, so this section is going to be very short. But they did have really cool merch, and of course they had manga for sale, and very cool artwork on the walls. The staff is kind in that if you buy something, they give you that very cool Zoro bag. One Piece is my favorite manga of all time, so of course I had to get a sticker of Luffy Chopper because he's so cute! And then I also got this, which is a blind box, but instead of getting a figurine, you actually get a postcard of one of the Straw Hat's most dramatic moments, or a supporting character's most dramatic moment. They also had this badass Luffy coaster, so of course I had to snag one. And then the only other character that they had was Law, so I love coasters, so I decided to grab that as well. Moving on to the Studio Ghibli Hall. I got the Totoro! This is my favorite purchase of this trip. I also got a handkerchief because it was it's just so dang cute, man. What can I say? And then I also got this kitchen towel. From the shrine, I got these postcards with cats. And now we all know why they have cats because of all of the stray ones that are nearby. I also got this wooden fox panel so that I can write my wishes on the back. I also bought the stand for it, and when I bought it, the person selling it actually purified this stand for me, which was really cool. And then from Nara, I had to get something of Shikamaru Kun. He is just so dang cute. And then for dinner, we were craving some western food, so we found this pasta place that puts a bunch of cheese on top, and it really hit the spot. I don't recall if this is the same night or a different night. This is a Sakura festival held at Nijo Castle. 
don't be alarmed that it says naked. It's actually a brand that sponsors this. And basically, they project some light shows onto the walls and the ground that reflects the sakura or cherry blossom season. It is very pretty. Some more cherry blossoms on the wall. I believe the lights going down is to represent sakuras or cherry blossoms falling from the leaves. I'm pretty sure these are fake with pink lights shown on it. And this is known for the reflection on the pond. And as you walk around the castle grounds, you'll see more of these projections of cherry blossoms or sakuras on the walls. I do recommend coming to the Sakura Festival at Nijo Castle because Nijo Castle is closed at night. So this is one of the few opportunities that the public can buy tickets to come to the castle grounds at night and just walk around and experience it with a little less people and some really great visuals. They also put a bunch of these uh, lights on the trees and make them shine different colors. And then at the end, there are some stalls and vendors and of course, these paper flowers that are sponsored by that company I mentioned earlier, Naked. So here are the flowers that you can buy and they'll have a fortune attached. They also set up a fake cherry blossom. So a lot of people were taking pictures of this because there were no cherry blossoms. And one last uh, illumination to end the night off. And then before you leave, make sure you get your stamp of Nijo Castle. This was in, I believe, their souvenir shop right at the end. So if you're looking for their stamp, make sure you visit the souvenir shop. And so I'm just trying to find a good place to put the stamp down. And so I decided to put it next to the shrine stamp. Pushing it down like I saw that guy do at the first Okode resort that we were at. And it came out pretty nice. 